Story Eight. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Clarica. Sammy and Susie Littletail by Howard R. Garris. Story Eight. Susie and Sammy find a nest. Sammy Littletail was up early the next morning. He had not slept very well, for Uncle Wiggily Longears had groaned very much because of the pain in his leg where he was shot. Sammy thought if he got up early and went for some nice, fresh carrots for his uncle, it would make the old rabbit feel better. While Sammy was digging up some carrots, in a field not far from the burrow where he lived, he saw the same gray squirrel that had warned him about not going into the deer park. "'What are you doing now?' asked the squirrel. "'It seems to me you are always doing something.' "'I am digging carrots for Uncle Wiggily Longears that was shot,' said Sammy. "'That is a very nice thing to do,' the gray squirrel said. "'You are a better boy rabbit than I thought you were.' "'What are you doing here?' Sammy asked the squirrel. "'Me? Oh, I am moving into a new nest. I am getting ready for spring.' "'A new nest!' exclaimed Sammy and all at once he thought of Mrs. Wren, who could not find a nest-house to live in. "'What are you going to do with your old nest?' the little boy rabbit asked. "'Why, leave it, to be sure. I never moved my nest.' "'Don't you want it any more?' "'Not in the least. I am through with it.' "'May I have it?' asked Sammy, very politely. "'You? What can a rabbit do with a nest in a tree?' They live in burrows. I know that, Sammy admitted. I was not asking for myself. And then he told the squirrel about Mrs. Wren. May she have your old nest? he asked. Why, yes, if she likes it, the squirrel replied. Only I am afraid she will find it rather large for such a little bird. I will hurry home and tell her, spoke Sammy. All right. Tell her she can move in any time she likes called the gray squirrel after Sammy, who, filling his forepaws with carrots, started off toward home as fast as he could run. He found Mama Littletail getting breakfast, and at once told her the good news. Then he told Mrs. Wren, who had gotten up early to get the early worm that always gets up before the alarm clock goes off. "'I will go and look at the nest at once,' said the little bird. "'I am very much obliged to you, Sammy. Where is it? "'Susie and I will show you,' spoke the little boy rabbit. "'Only we cannot go all the way, because rabbits are not allowed in the deer park. But I can point it out to you.' So, after breakfast, Sammy and Susie started off. They ran on the ground, and the little brown bird flew along over their heads. She went so much faster than they did that she had to stop every once in a while and wait for them. But at last they got to the place where they could see the deserted squirrel nest. "'There it is,' said Sammy, pointing to it. "'So I observe,' said the bird. "'I will fly up and look at it,' which she did. She was gone some time, and when she flew back to the ground, where Sammy and Susie were waiting for her, the children asked, "'Did you like it?' "'I think it will do very well,' replied Mrs. Wren. "'It is a little larger than I need, and there are not the improvements I am used to. There is no hot and cold water, and no bathroom.' but then I suppose I can bathe in the brook, so that is no objection. There is no roof to it, though. No roof? repeated Sammy. No. You see, squirrels never have one such as I am used to, but when my family comes from the south we can build one. I will take the nest, and I hope you bunnies will come to see me sometimes, when I am settled and have the carpets down. We can't climb trees, objected Susie. "'That's so. You can't,' admitted Mrs. Wren. "'Never mind. I can fly down and see you. "'Now I think I will begin to clean out the nest, "'for the squirrels have left a lot of nutshells in it.' "'So she began to clean out the nest, "'and Susie and Sammy started home. "'But before they got there something happened, "'and what it was I will tell you, perhaps, tomorrow night, "'if the rooster doesn't crow and wake me up.'" End of Story 8